Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, so today's video is about this Quantum Motor. Um, I did a previous video a couple weeks ago on that. If you guys haven't seen that, I would suggest watching that first. Um, today I just wanted to do a little bit of an update um, of what I've done. So I um, organized all these wires and checked polarity. So they're separated into front and back. And then they all come together into this MOSFET circuit. Um, this MOSFET is using a hall sensor right here, so there's little tiny magnets as the um, timing on it. And um, on here we have the on and off switch. Since they're on, then we have SG or generator mode, so generator mode SG. And uh, we're going to start off in SG mode. And I have a little switch here that can override the PWM if you just want to run it um, in full power. So, and this is my, my new PWM. Um, it's an Arduino based uh, with a 5k pot on off switch and then a 9 volt battery that could run about 7 days straight. So um, pretty cool. So we're going to get this thing started up. So this isn't a self starting motor, it's only a, a single phase. So you can see how the pulse width really chops it up. And then we're running at 24 volts on the power supply and then it's coming through here and um, into the output um, um, into the output is going to a cap dump that's lined up for um, 60 volts so it's going to be discharging um, right about about now and the output is going to 48 volt batteries so we have 24 on the input 48 on the output um, so it's kind of stepping up to it so everything that comes out is a 48 volt base so let's just start bringing this up because right now we're only using uh, 30 milliamps, so at 24 volts. So you can see how the pulse width really makes it a really smooth speed. So right now we're about a third of the way, about 100 milliamps, and see our cap dump starting to charge up. So it usually triggers about 63 or so like that. And um, so yeah, we're getting about two and a half, three amps. So let's keep bringing this thing up. So we'll get up to maybe 250 milliamps. So you can see the waveforms. So the little loop is the magnet and then all these pulses are, are what we're collecting for the output to charge the second battery. So now we're bringing it up, it's starting to charge pretty nicely. So let's um, keep bringing this up. So now we're at full speed. And you can see it's just one pulse per magnet and then the high voltage spike at the bottom. So if we put this on a 10 times scale, you can see the little pulse there. It's about 100 volts coming out. And we're using half an amp. Here's our charge rate. Right? And um, let's see what the torque is. So, the torque, even trying to really slow this down, it's still, I mean, two amps is not very much, but pretty strong. Definitely need to get this thing hooked up to something. So, what we're gonna do now is um, let's turn this down, slow this down. So we're gonna turn on the generator mode, which is gonna use a little bit more power, but we're, um, we're gonna get back more power. So now, starting to charge a little bit faster. Bring this thing up. So at full power, it looks pretty much the same as SG, but um, the charging is just a lot faster. So we're doing about three and a half to four amps as far as this meter goes, and um, we're using about 700 milliamps. So let's um, slow this thing down. See what happens. 
So even loading it up, we're still getting a lot of power back. I mean, this is just under two amps right now loaded up. I'm gonna burn my hand. So yeah, pretty neat. And um, there is adjustment on the timing. You just have to uh, weigh in speed versus torque or output. And um, yeah, pretty cool. But um, definitely really smooth. Speed controls work really good. So you can see if we we use the pulse width, we could load this thing up. Or it's almost stopped. It's about a little bit less than half an hour, and it's still still charging. So it's barely moving with the pulse width. So pulse widths definitely make a difference. See it right there on the scope. Anyway, thanks for watching.